Hey you guys, what's up? This is from lesson five. We're gonna talk about activity one. So if you wanna follow along in your books, which is kind of the smart thing to do, I'm gonna be on page 146, but I'll be flipping back and forth. So I'm gonna start with page, uh, well, I guess the first question. Now with all of these activities, make sure we're looking for those ways that we are talking about being a mathematician. So with your highlighter or underlining with your pencil, habits of mind, we're looking for ways that we will look for and make use of structure. We're seeing the patterns of geometry and how they come across different problems. And then look for and express regularity in repeated reasoning. That is a high level math phrase, but it means that we are continuing to see the ways that things connect across different geom geometries, different like principles, and then trying to build those connections even further. Now, um, you should have already done the getting started. So we're gonna start with first question here, and it says consider the shapes from the getting started and then name those shapes. So that's back on page 144 as a reminder this is, uh, bum, bum, no. uh, this is page 146 that we're starting with out of this activity here. So flipping back and forth in your book, if you notice, the shapes that are there, there's a hexagon, a circle, a trapezoid, a parallelogram, a triangle, and then that star shape. So naming them, go ahead and write them in over there. Hexagon. Even if you go back also to page 144 and you write on this page what those uh, names are, here they are for us for here right now. The reason why this is important is because knowing the names of shapes is power and it is building on your geometry experience. Okay, we have a parallelogram. Two L's and then one L, parallelogram. So one, two, three, four. I have a triangle. And then I'm going to leave it up there now, but there's also the star image on that page. All of these items, all of these images, they have some sort of reflection or rotation symmetry. What the getting started was supposed to help prepare you to do is understand how things can be folded or rotated. And if they map, like land back on the original shape, then that means that they are symmetric. Think of the wings of a butterfly. As the wings of a butterfly or a bird flap together and then open back up again, that's reflectional symmetry because the body right down the middle of the bird or the butterfly, you know, in the middle, those wings fold and then open back up with the body of the bird or butterfly in the middle. That's reflectional symmetry. A plane figure has reflectional symmetry if you can draw a line. We should do some highlighting here as well, so feel free to highlight as I also highlight. Reflectional, get rid of this. Reflectional symmetry is an important idea to notate. That's the vocab word. If you can draw a line so that the left side of the figure and the right side of the figure are exactly the same. All right, the line you drew is called the line of symmetry, and so highlight that as well. Highlight line of symmetry. Those are the two things that we need to be able to do. Identify what it is, and where it happens. All right, so which shapes, again, looking at the getting started, which shapes from the getting started have reflectional symmetry? Honestly, if you can divide them along any sort of line in the middle, that tells us that we can have reflectional symmetry. So the hexagon, in fact, the hexagon has several lines of symmetry. Uh, the circle, now remember, in the getting started, if you could fold the shape like exactly in half, so maybe the trapezoid, were you able to actually fold the trapezoid along a certain line so that the left side and right side were the same? There might only be one line of symmetry for the trapezoid. You know what doesn't have uh, reflectional symmetry? Parallelogram. You cannot fold that parallelogram so the left side of the parallelogram and the right side exactly match. Some parallelograms are possible, but not this one. Um, rectangles, you can fold a rectangle. Squares, you can fold a square. Rhombuses, you can fold rhombuses, rhombi. So those do have reflectional symmetry, but you know what doesn't? Parallelograms. That one from the example. That triangle, specifically that triangle, does not, in fact, looking at it, the left side, or I guess this bottom edge right here, the, the, the top corner and this right side corner, they don't, they're like, they don't match. If you were to like draw a line right through the middle, it would not go through the middle. So therefore, there is no reflectional symmetry. You should be able to draw a line through the middle. And then last of all, 
the star shape. All right, the star shape, you can divide it along any of those. That's the setup for this. We're gonna practice this with some examples off of this page. So let's see, we have an equilateral triangle. Equilateral, equal in sides, all, of, all three sides are equal length. It has three lines of symmetry. Let's draw them. So focus on a vertex, let's say the top vertex, and then draw a line straight down through the middle of the triangle. That's one of the lines of symmetry. It says that there are three. So maybe you can skip ahead, focus on a vertex, draw a line through the opposite side, and make sure it goes exactly through the middle. And so my example isn't quite there. Where's my undo button? Try it again. Straight down, try it again. Um, ooh, I'm gonna use the line tool. So if I go from here, right down through the middle, that's a line of symmetry. That is a really big like, like line. I'll make it be a little bit skinnier. Okay, here's another line of symmetry. Use a straight edge, you should have a ruler right now. Okay, and then the other one. Notice something about them. If I draw them very accurately, they actually all meet exactly in this middle area. And so that's something we're looking for is do the lines all three of those lines meets in actually what we call the center of the triangle. Okay, number four. How many lines of symmetry does the rectangle have? And if you can imagine folding the rectangle exactly in half, then the line that is that middle where the rectangle is folded in half, that's our line of symmetry. So straight down, pretty much in the middle. There's two. Wait, no, that one won't work, okay? That one won't work. If you take this corner and fold it over to this corner, they won't actually line up. Or when you do, these edges won't match up completely. So the key thing for us to know here is that mm -mm, there is no diagonal line of symmetry. There's only the vertical one and the horizontal line of symmetry. Okay. Um, I suppose I should slide that up a little bit. And then where they cross? exactly in the middle. Number five, how many lines of symmetry are there in a square? Hmm, think about it. One, two, three, there are four, okay? So, surprise, surprise, the line of symmetry for a square happens to be just like the rectangle, straight up and down, horizontal, okay, trying to make sure that I find my middle, then also, in this case, because of the way you can fold a square, think about when you cut a sandwich and you cut it from corner to corner, you create triangles. And so that happens to also be one of the diagonals. And then here's the last one. There are four lines of symmetry for a square. Can we identify them? Okay, if we talked about line symmetry, re reflectional symmetry, that's all we're doing. We're just trying to see if can we cut or fold the triangle, fold the shape in half. And there it is. Let's try number six. We're gonna move on to the next one from this video. And again, feel free to like skip ahead or, or jump in, in 10 seconds at a time, see if there's new material for you. Okay, highlighters please. A plane figure is also able to have rotational symmetry. So, highlight rotational symmetry. If you can rotate the shape, so my phone, if I rotate it and it looks exactly like it was when I'm done rotating it, then that's an element of rotational symmetry. So here's my phone, it's kind of flat. This doesn't look like it was before. Okay, keep rotating it all the way around, still doesn't look like it was before. And if you ignore the camera hole, where you can see it with the thing, the, the rectangle of my phone is back to flat again. So maybe 180 degrees of rotation, my phone has 180 degrees rotation. A shape, okay, which shapes in the getting started have rotational symmetry. Any of them that you can take and physically turn, and after you turn it, like, 60 degrees, 120 degrees, 360 degrees. After you turn it, you get back to the original shape. Like see how on the hexagon, the line on the top is flat, and I have to turn it until the next line on the top is flat. And so now this line up here is flat again. That is one element of rotational symmetry. How much do they turn the book? Well, that's what we're doing in this section. So 
hexagon. Ooh, let's not do it that way. Let's make this be redo. And then change my marker to be a little bit smaller in size. There we go. The hexagon has rotational symmetry. Go back to the getting started, page 144, the circle. Circle actually has like infinite rotational symmetry because you can't tell where the sides are, but it still counts. The circle has rotational symmetry. The trapezoid, mm -mm. you have to rotate it all the way around. The parallelogram, actually the parallelogram, because it looks like this, and then I'm gonna flip the book. I'm rotating the book, and now, I mean, if you're only focused on the, I can find it. If you're only focused on the parallelogram, see it, see it, see it, see it, it would look the same. Rotate it back, it still looks the same. So therefore, the parallelogram has rotational symmetry. Um, triangle, not the triangle. Triangle doesn't. You have to like rotate it all the way around, all the way a full circle, that doesn't count. And then last of all, the star, the star has rotational symmetry. In order to determine if a shape has rotational symmetry, trace it and then literally take the tracing paper and turn it. And if you turn the tracing paper only a little bit, maybe a quarter turn, maybe halfway around, but if you take the trace and you have the ability to turn the tracing paper all the way around, like without making a full circle, but like part of a circle, and it looks exactly the same, that's rotational symmetry. I mean, all the way around a circle is 360 degrees, right? So if I go from, let's say I pick this point right up here in the top. Okay, it's right on the top of the hexagon. Zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, zoom in. We don't want to do it. Let's go. Let's go. Okay. So I have this point right here all the way up in the top of the hexagon. And if I take that hexagon, the hexagon, if I take that, that plus sign, the, the Switzerland logo, and I turn it, one quarter turn. Now I'm trying to make sure you understand. I want to turn it in a positive angle. So I guess I should say I'm going to rotate it that way. Okay, that's a positive rotation. So I'm going to take this point and it would land over there. That's only a quarter turn. That's only 90 degrees. So the rotational degree amount, I'm only rotating 90. In fact, because of the way that it is as a plus sign, I could even rotate it um, from the top all the way to there. So that that point that was in the beginning at the top is now at the bottom. That's a 180 degree rotation. But the plus sign, Switzerland's cross, it will land exactly back on its point. Do that again all the way around to there. That is a third rotational symmetry. That is 90 plus 90 plus 90. A 270 degree rotation we are able to calculate how many degrees of rotation there are based upon if we turn it over and over. Now, this is the one that's like, yeah, all shapes have this. So, boo, boring. This one, all the way back around to itself, all 360 degrees. Yeah, I mean, all shapes do that. You can turn all the way around. Yay, good for you that you rotated. What's the smallest number of rotational symmetry? 90? I know that because 360 divided by 1, 2, 3, 4. There are four places that the, the cross, this Switzerland plus sign, could rotate to. So 360 divided by 4, that's the smallest number of rotations. And it equals 90 degrees. Fit all that in on your book. Hey, let's go to page 147. Okay, so skip ahead. Can a shape have both reflectional and rotational symmetry? Yeah, absolutely. We have our examples right here. We have the hexagon. We have the circle. We have that star pentagon shape. Those all have reflectional and rotational. Okay, so yes, for sure. That's a weird line. Okay, there we go. Yes, for sure. Uh, for example, the hexagon. So E, G. You know those mean that means for example, but it's like in Latin. Put a little comma after it because it's supposed to be a clause. For example, the hexagon. 
that's an example of a shape that has both reflectional and rotational symmetry. All right. Here we go. Question nine, page 147. Page 147. You have also identified transformations that carry a figure onto itself. Reflectional and rotational symmetry are proper. Oh, highlight, highlight time. Reflectional, nope. Use the highlighter. Reflectional and rotational symmetry are properties of figures that can be carried onto themselves. So this idea that it goes back onto itself, it's making it look the same. Consider the four shapes shown. Octagon, trapezoid, equilateral triangle, and rectangle. Describe the reflections and rotations that carry each figure back onto itself. So for the octagon, I guess we'll do that right in this space. For the octagon, it has reflectional and also rotational symmetry. Reflectional symmetry is when uh, it identifies lines. So I'm going to actually draw those lines in. You should draw them in as well. That's going to be our way to talk about reflectional symmetry. So drop in a line. Mm, draw. Drop in a line. There's one, two, three. Ooh, that didn't work. Uh, three, four. I'll just move the dots. Uh, it's nice and heavy on a computer. Five, and then six, seven, ooh, eight sides, eight angles in a regular octagon like this one. There are eight lines of symmetry, and the better I draw them, they all should actually pass right through the middle. Okay? So we can, do, we can identify the rotational, uh, the reflectional symmetry by checking that information out. Let's take a look at the trapezoid. How many lines of symmetry? What is the reflectional symmetry for the trapezoid? There's only one, right through the middle. For the equilateral triangle, there are three. Three sides, three angles, equilateral. And then for the rectangle, there are two. Please draw better than I did. Oh my gosh. I feel the video is getting over long, right? Okay, so here we go. The hex, the octagon. The octagon has eight lines of symmetry. Did you also know that the octagon, we can rotate it? Remember what I said about the rotation, okay? I can take that octagon shape, use tracing paper, right? Trace it and then figure out like how many specific rotations it takes to go all the way back around. This point can go there, 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 and then of course back to itself. Lovely little flower. So if it can do that, that means that there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight rotations and um, eight rotations. at 360 over eight, which I think is 45 degrees. All right, just do the math in your calculator. So every 45 degrees, so 45, then 90, then 135, then 180, then uh, 225, then 270, then 315, and then last of all, 360. But you know what? 360 is a boo, no one cares about you kind of a thing because everything has 360. So I guess maybe there's seven rotations, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then of course back to itself. Oh, uh, a zero degree rotation. It didn't move at all. That's a rotation. So yeah, let's go with eight. Seven that actually do stuff. The other two at the end don't really do anything. Okay, let's talk about the, the, the next one then, the trapezoid. The trapezoid, here, reminders, reminders, reminders. So the trapezoid, it's an equilateral trap. No, it's not equilateral. It's called isosceles. The two sides are the same. OK, so in an isosceles trapezoid, boom, boom, there's one line of reflection.
And then, in order to make the isosceles trapezoid rotate back around, it, it won't. It'll either, right here, right here, it'll either not rotate at all, zero degrees, or it'll have to rotate all of the way around, all 360 degrees. So with no real rotation. And I wrote the words rotational symmetry. Sorry, trapezoid. Sorry, isosceles trapezoid. You're out. Next. We had the uh, equilateral triangle. There are three lines of symmetry for the equilateral triangle. That is bolder than I need that line to be. OK, not erasing it. The equilateral triangle has three lines of symmetry, of reflectional symmetry and gosh this is just like the, the octagon if you can take the octagon and you can turn it eight times like thinking about the corners of the octagon let's do the same thing for the equilateral triangle I can take this point and I can move it there and there and then back to itself those are rotational like see the direction I should go with a positive so positive is that way that way and that way. Well, what's the number of degrees that I can turn this triangle so that it goes back to the exact same shape? Even though it did rotate, but it looks the same, right? So when we do that, we take 360, because that's how many degrees are in a circle, and we divide by three. There are three rotations. So three, 360 divided by three, 36 divided by three, three, that's 120. So every 120 degrees, the, the equilateral triangle will rotate back on top of itself. That means one of them, the first one is 120 degrees, but then we can do two of them in a row. We can do two of these 120 degree rotations. 120, 120, add them together. That's the second one. That's if you went over two corners. And then the last one, boo, you're boring. You don't mean anything changed. Who cares? But it does happen. The 360 degrees is all the way back around. So three rotations, but two that actually do something. I guess on the other side, we should still acknowledge zero degrees. That could happen. OK, the last one, uh, the rectangle. The rectangle has two lines of symmetry. In fact, I'm not going to write it at all. You're going to have access to it. I'm just going to say uh, the rectangle, right? This is the notation for this last object up here. We said this for the isosceles trapezoid. We said this for the octagon. I'm running out of room, but you're not. For the rectangle, there are two lines of symmetry. There are one rotation. So the rotation would be going from here. You can't go to this corner. You'd have to go all the way to this corner right here. That's backwards. Positive rotations, please. So positive means like your right hand curling its fingers into a fist. Your right hand, look at that flex. That right hand right there means that we're going to rotate this way. That's a positive rotation when you come counterclockwise to the spin of the clock. So that and then back around, there are two rotations. So 360 degrees is the full circle rotation. Divide by two, that's the number of degrees of rotation that a rectangle has think. Maybe there's stuff on the last page. Take a look. But that's, that's about it. That's about all that we need to know for this, this video. Okay. Clark. Clark says that the horizontal line of symmetry in the rectangle means that a reflection across that line